How did, mm, I should have renumbered 2.4, but we're going to start here. Okay, so the polynomial functions, we can decide, we can kind of figure out things based on their first terms or their leading terms. Make sure that the degrees are in order. We find the highest degree, that's a 2 right there. We have a 2 here, a 3 here, that's the highest degree, 5, making sure. Okay, um, so if we know, we first separate out the odds and the evens, okay, um, we can go ahead and that one is even, that one's odd, that one's even, and that's odd and that's even, and that's odd. Okay, and then if I look at the coefficients, and I'm just doing this all together in one, one space, it's a negative coefficient, and it's an e. So it's gonna behave like an upside down parabola. Okay, and that's a positive, and it's odd, so it's gonna behave like a positive slope, linear function. And that's negative, so that's going to behave how come I can't zoom in I can't well let me zoom in and then that's it's going to behave well I got this wrong I'm sorry guys that last 2.3 video just kind of did it for me okay so <clears throat> this one is going to it's a negative and an even so it's going to behave like yeah I did it right upside down parabola okay this one is going to be positive and odd so a positive slope like that like a linear function negative and even once again the ends are gonna in behavior is gonna look like that the odd and that's negative notice that that's negative okay, that's what I'm referring to and so that is going to behave like a negative slope Ah, computer so slow. Negative slope. So it's going to do one of these. It's slow because it's processing that crazy video that I made, an hour video. Oh, that one. And then it's going to look like that. Um, it's even and it's positive. So it's going to behave like a right side parabola. And that's odd and that is a positive. So it's going to behave like a linear function, just like that. So just based on the end behavior, okay, and it's not gonna let me. So based on that, I can kind of separate out um, what these are. Okay, so I know that this is even, this is going to be even, and it's going to face down. So it could either be the two that I have that I drew. Okay, it could either be x to the fourth plus two x cubed, or it could be, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, negative one fourth x to the fourth. No, I'm gonna go ahead and unhighlight this, yeah. So that's going to be even, but if you take a look, there's another one here, right here. Okay, but I'm going to try to unhighlight these. Well, I can kind of separate them out. That one and that one. But then you look at it, and one of them's to the second degree, and it's going to look like a parabola. One of them's to the fourth degree. And so if you look at the turning points, I have one, two, three turning points, which means it's going to be the fourth degree. Okay, so I think that that one, I can't move it again, but I think this one for sure is going to be f of x equals negative 2x squared minus 5x. And this one here, 
out. It's going to be taking it out. My focus f of x equals negative one fourth x to the fourth plus three x squared. Okay. Um, are there any other even ones? Yes, there is. If you look at the end behavior, they either either have to go all the way up, both sides go up or down. Okay. And there is one more. And I can't get my highlighter to work. It's this one right here. And if you take a look, this one is definitely even. f of x equals x to the fourth plus 2x cubed. Okay, now that leaves us with the right ones. And if you look, that's going to have a positive slope. That means it's going to have a positive coefficient. This one is also going to have a positive slope. This one right here is going to have a negative slope or a negative coefficient. So that process of eliminating, which I'm pretty sure you guys are good at, the only one with a negative slope is this one right here. So this one is going to be negative one third x cubed plus x squared minus four thirds. It also has two turning points, one degree less than the one exponent less than the leading degree or the highest degree or the degree. Okay. No, I don't want to do that. Why is it taking away all the stuff? Now that leaves me with B and F for my last choice. Both of them were positive and odd. Okay. Um, we have to look at the turning points. This one has one, two, three, four turning points, guys. So that has four turning points which probably tells me it's a fifth degree. Is there any fifth degrees? Yes, there is. There is f of x equals one fifth x to the fifth minus two x cubed plus nine fifths x. This one is gonna be two turning points. So f of x equals two x cubed minus three x plus one, okay? I'm trying to do too many things at one time. That's why it's slowing down my computer. Okay, it says find the zeros of the polynomial, indicate their multiplicity, state the end behavior, and sketch a very rough graph using sign diagrams. So I'm going to find the zeros by setting the y equal to zero. Okay, so t equals three is the zero. T equals three, right there, okay? And then um, the multiplicity of T equals zero is two, okay? T equals zero is two. Now, I'm gonna use the sign diagram with two, and we all know that two is vertex, but what happens at the vertex? polynomials. It bounces. We're going to have a bounce. And I already know this, but I'm going to test it. Okay. Zero. I could do it in the factored form because um, the factored form encompasses all of the function. I didn't leave anything behind. So x equals three. Try that. Oh, wow. I just put the multiplicity as a zero. Whoops. Oh, my computer. This constant battle with a surface. I know the surface is not a very good laptop, but 
I'm just, it was either this or an, a MacBook, the one that you can write on, but I don't know how to use a MacBook. So positive and a positive. So it's going to be a bounce. We can figure out the y-intercept right here. Once again, there you go. Okay, that's the information I needed. The end behavior as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. Okay. Okay. Next one, let's go ahead and figure out the zeros. Let's go ahead and factor that. 3t minus t. It's going to be a 7 and a 1, right? Yep. So we have t equals 0 t equals 7 over 3, and t equals 1. But I have to tell you the multiplicity. Z equal multiplicity of 2. There's two t equals zeros. t equals 7 over 3, multiplicity 1. t equals 1, multiplicity of 1. Okay? So in these cases, uh, we know here that it's going to bounce, pass through, and pass through. I don't even know how to spell pass through. Pass through. Yeah. Okay, um, let's go ahead and draw our sine diagram. Um, we have zero, seven thirds, and one. Seven through and one is going to be switched. Seven thirds is like 2.3. Okay. And then let's go ahead and figure out, whoa, what just happened? Yeah, guys, my computer's encoding that huge monster called 2.3 lesson video, I mean, study guide video, negative one. And I can use the factored form because it doesn't leave anything behind. Negative and negative. That's going to be a positive. X equals 0 0.5. That's going to be positive half of 3. That's going to be less than negative 7. And then negative. It's going to be a positive. Because remember, it bounces here. It's going to bounce. It's going to look like that. Okay. And then um, x equals 2. x equals 2 is going to be positive. 6, still a negative, but a positive. Okay. Pass through 1, so it has to come back up. And then x equals 4. It's going to be a positive, positive, and a positive. Okay, let's go ahead and draw those. Come on, is it almost finishing coding? Almost. Okay. It's doing the swirly thing. So let's plot those points. Okay. 
I don't know what's going on. My OneNote is not responding. Close out some applications. So negative one right here. Okay, and then, oh no. Once again, I bought it the wrong thing. Zero, it's going to bounce there, right? And then at one, it's going to pass through. And then at 2.3, somewhere here, it's going to pass through. From here, I know that it was a positive. Okay, it's not going to have any y-intercept because the y-intercept is zero, like the other y-intercept. And then it's going to have some kind of... It's going to have some kind of thing where it has some kind of a relative maximum here. We don't know exactly. And then it's going to have some kind of relative minimum here. And then it's just going to pass through. Okay. So all of this would be positive. All of this would be positive. All of that would be negative. And then this negative also, and then after that it's positive. Okay, um, let's state the end behavior. And we already knew what the end behavior is gonna be because that's t to the second and t to the second, and that's going to be t to the fourth, that's still even, and the three, that's positive. So as x approaches positive infinity, uh, y is going to approach positive infinity, and as x approaches negative infinity, y is going to approach also positive infinity. Okay. Good job. Whoa, what just happened? Okay, so for this one, let's go ahead and solve for zero. I'm going to factor by grouping x squared x plus 3 minus 4x plus 3. So you end up having 0 equals x plus 3, x squared minus 4, and then 0 equals x plus 3, and then x plus 2, x minus 2. So the zeros are going to be x equals negative uh, 3, x equals negative 2, x equals 2, and all with a multiplicity of 1. So that means that it's going to pass through every single time. Pass through, pass through. pass through. And to be really honest, the sign diagrams are not that necessary. Okay. The sign diagrams are not that necessary, but I mean, you can look at the end behavior by looking at the first term. I mean, it's going to have, it's going to behave like linear function. So as X approaches with a positive slope, it's going to be positive. And as X approaches negative infinity, y is going to be negative, y approaches negative, okay. man, negative, okay, and so um, I can take the negative 3, pass through, negative 2, pass through, positive 2, pass through. I know the end behavior is going to look like that and that, but once again, if you want to be sure, you can draw a dot sign diagram, negative 3, negative 2, and 2. I think my surface is just going to blow up. It's so hot. Literally, I can't touch it. Okay, so let's test some points. x equals negative 4 x equals negative 4, there's going to be a negative, 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 and a negative. So that's going to be a negative. And we see that, like, clearly that it's going to be a negative output. And then x equals negative, x equals negative 2.5. 
2.5 right there. And the point happens to be lower. And this is really getting to me. Ah, I'm sorry, I have to erase that. X equals negative 2.5. So if I look at the original function, and it will not let me zoom in, it's going to be a positive and a negative and a negative. So it's going to be a positive. Those are all going to be zeros. X equals zero. That's going to be a positive, positive, and wait a second. It's going to be a positive positive and a negative. I was about to say x equals 3. That's going to be a positive, positive, and positive. Okay, so once again the end behavior is going to look like that. And then there's going to be some kind of relative maximum there. And then I can figure out the y-intercept, right? If I can scroll up to the function, <laughs> I'm just having a day. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, negative 12. That doesn't help. Okay. Negative 12 is going to be all the way down here. Let's just make it like that. And then see from negative th negative 2 to 2 it's all going to be negative and then it's just going to pass through all just passing through and look what number 25 says i already gave it to in factor form and this is easy for me so that you don't have to factor things that you don't know how to factor it's like um we're going to do another section on polynomials where you have to factor these intense polynomials but this is already being factored for you because I'm easing you into graphing. Okay, so x equals 3 is going to give us x equals 0 with a multiplicity of 3. And then x minus 2 to the 4th is going to give us x equals 2 with a multiplicity of 4. And then x minus uh, x plus 1, I forgot to x plus 1 is going to give us x equals negative 1 with a multiplicity of 1. Okay, so we know that here it's going to bend, bounce, and pass through. And if I collect the highest degrees, x to the fourth and x, and I add up the exponents, and that's going to give me eight. I know that's an even function with a positive coefficient. So as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. Both of them are going to behave like a positive parabola, positive coefficient parabola. Okay, um, let's go ahead and put the points there. Zero, it's going to bend, and at 2, it's going to bounce, and then at negative 1, it's going to pass through. But once again, if you want to be sure, and we know that the end behavior is going to end up looking like that. And so I'm going to put a negative 1, a 0, and a 2, so I can test. I think my computer is going to blow up, guys. Seriously, it's doing some crazy stuff. I opened up too many things. X equals negative 2 in its factored formula. And Ms. also already gave you the factor form. Negative, and then it's going to be whatever that is. It's going to be a positive because I'm going to, I'm going to raise it to the fourth power. Okay, and then um, that is going to be a negative. So that's going to be a plus. And that's, that fits kind of like what our graph looks. It's going to pass through here, right? So let's go ahead and see what x equals negative 0 0.5 gives us. Okay, Kyung, don't make any mistakes because it's going to take forever for you to erase. And I'm almost done. Negative 0 0.5. So that's going to give me a negative. 
and then whatever that is that's going to give me a positive and then that's going to give me a positive so that's going to be a negative so i don't know what happened to my graph it just got erased weird things are getting erased so negative one then we had a pass through okay and then at zero we're going to have a bend so we're going to have it's going to go down and i can figure out the y-intercept zero zero negative two but you know zero so that's going to be the y-intercept i have to change colors um, zero equals zero it's just going to be zero so it doesn't it's not going to have another y-intercept no it's just going to come back up okay from here before it actually goes onto the graph here let's do a nice little bend i'm gonna do this side of the parabola and then kind of like that side of the parabola and make this side look like that okay notice that that is clearly a very good bend i think instead of a pass through okay and on your test if you want to mark pass through or bend that's great I don't, I don't I don't mind you doing that at all okay and then uh, let's go ahead and test x equals 1 x equals 1 is definitely going to be positive but once again we could just test it and is it going to let me go up is it let me go nope it's not it's not okay now it is okay so positive positive and positive okay so that's going to be positive. X equals three. Is it going to make me go to the right? Is it going to come on? You got this. You can do it. You go to the right. There you go. Okay. So we're going to have a positive, positive, and positive. So all of these are going to have a positive because at X equals two, there's going to be a bounce. Okay. So we're going to come down to it somewhere around here. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be accurate. And then we're gonna have a bounce. Woo! <sighs> and guys, good job. Okay, good job. I'm gonna just mark that off right there. Good job. Bye.